Hello and welcome to the European Parliament. We are here to discuss child poverty in Europe, an issue that is in the eyes of Caritas Europa, a patch of shame for Europe and should not be tolerated any longer. Caritas Europa is holding a seminar on child poverty on the 19th of June, where two new reports will be launched, as well as 10 recommendations towards European policymakers and decision makers on how to tackle this complex issue. Now, with us here is Jean Lambert, a member of the European Parliament, who will address our seminar. Welcome. Yeah. Now, first, to put things into a little context before we uh, go deeper into the issue, and also to have a figure on uh, the issue, are you aware of uh, how many of the 100 million children in the European Union are living in poverty or uh, at the risk of poverty? Well, the figures that I've seen, uh, it's around one out of every five children is, is in that situation, which is an enormous number. And I think given as well the current financial crisis is probably a number that's growing. Exactly. And uh, the latest figures we have is exactly 27%, meaning that 20, 27 million of the 100 million people in, in the EU uh, and even in um, the state member state that is uh, in the worst situation, it's 33 percent. So it's a terrible figure that needs to be tackled. Uh, but let's go into politics. Um, to what extent has uh, your political grouping in the European Parliament uh, put this issue on the political agenda? Well, I think if we're honest that we've been looking more at poverty as a whole. Um, you know, child poverty we, we see as, as, part, as part of that. It's been there in the work that we've done on homelessness and the demand for a, a strategy on homelessness across the EU. It's been there in the work that we've done on active inclusion and you know, what happens to the families of those that are the most excluded and so on. But, and it's been part, of course, of other work that we've been doing when we've been looking at children's strat rights strategy. Obviously, issues of child poverty have been important for us in that. Yeah. And if we look at uh, the European Parliament uh, as, as a whole, uh, to what extent has it been on the agenda of commissions and, and uh, what do you think about that? Well, with the European Parliament, uh, it's been there when we've been, been looking at sort of the, the anti-poverty strategy of the European Union in reports from one of our German members, Gabriel Zimmer, in the, the report on anti-poverty as well from Frédéric Dardenne, uh, which was there with, tied in with the Belgian presidency, which of course was initiating the recommendation, um, you, you know, on children and child poverty as well within the European Union. It's formed part of our strategy on children's rights. So it's certainly one of those... That, those underlying sort of core issues within the European Parliament, within the anti-poverty agenda. Yeah. Now, the European Council has uh, suggested that child poverty would be one of the priorities for the Europe 2020 strategy. Could you say that uh, this is something that every member of the Parliament is aware of? No, I don't think it's something that every member of the Parliament's aware of. I think that even within the 2020 strategy itself, it was, it was a struggle, as you know, with member states to even get um, you know, a poverty reduction target in there. And I think that for a lot of members in the Parliament are maybe more interested in the sort of the competitive side of the 2020 strategy rather than actually looking at really the poverty reduction targets. Yeah. So what do you believe that the European Parliament could do to make sure that the strong political statements of the EU heads of states about prioritizing child poverty do translate into consistent resources? When we're currently looking, of course, at the next you know, financial um, sort of budget um, envelope, trying to get the right word for the, the European Union for, from 2014 onwards, and what we're very keen on in Parliament is that we actually keep a chunk, 20% of at least the, the social fund within that for anti-poverty strategies. So it's also to make sure that that actually reaches the people most in poverty and that we look as well at how this affects children within that. But it's also there in some of the targets that we have on reaching those who are younger people who are not in education, um, employment, you, you know, or training. So... 
it's how, how do the funds that we're also allocating um, to, to tackle poverty also reach those who are in most need and indeed the children within that. So we can look at that. We can also look at the national reform programmes um, from our, our member states to really check as well that they have meaningful targets on anti-poverty uh, for children. It's, it's not the case for my own member state for the UK but some member states have those figures and to check how are those being dealt with particularly in times of, of financial constraints to make sure that we are not diminishing life opportunities for children within the cuts that are going on on the austerity measures. Yeah, speaking of budget, uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, Caritas Europa has put together uh, 10 recommendations to uh, European decision makers and uh, one of them is um, a greater visibility for children and their families in poverty in the EU budget. Do you agree with this recommendation? Yes, I think it needs to be there as part, as, as part of the general anti-poverty strategy. Um, but, you know, to make sure, as I say, that we are explicit as well in certain of the groups that we most want to target within that. It's an indicator for the 2020 strategy, as we've been saying. The funds are supposed to link with the 2020 strategy. Therefore, there's a logic in actually getting that into the funds. At the moment, part of the struggle is to make sure that we can keep earmarked funds for anti-poverty at all, um, you know, let alone then actually trying to break that down into, into different sort of sectors within it. So that's the big struggle, is making sure we keep money for anti-poverty generally. Mm -hmm. And then let's look at, at how we actually sort of um, then divide that to make sure that we are hitting all sectors within that. If we go four years backwards to the year of uh, 2008, uh, when the financial crisis hit uh, Europe, or what we can name it, um, we saw that EU leaders, um, they quite rapidly agreed to pour billions of taxpaying money into financial institutions, into the banking sector, to sort of uh, save the banks from bankruptcy. Now, Caritas Europa has said that it's possible to eradicate child poverty if you would express uh, the same amount of political will as they had for saving their banking sector. Do you agree with that? Well, I think the comparison raises some questions because they might have put a lot of money into the banks, but they haven't yet finished their reform of the banking sector. So, you know, unless you're actually going to do some systemic reforms as well alongside an injection of cash, you don't necessarily get the, the required outcome. You might, deal, you might tackle an issue for, you, you know, for now. What are you going to do to actually change the system that keeps people in poverty, the structural poverty that's there? So I think you need to look at that side of the question as well, not only the money. And that even you also have to deal as well with the inequalities in society because I think one of the things that we're becoming more and more aware of is that it isn't just a question of how, how far you lift the people at the bottom, it's also how far do you reduce that gap between those on, at the bottom and those at the top yeah. and actually have it, doing that has a much longer lasting effect than simply raising the initial income of people at the moment. So it's systemic you know, changes that you want. The cash is useful but if you don't have the systemic changes, in a few years' time, you're going to need more cash. And this is a problem with the banking sector. And I feel that this could also be a problem in tackling poverty. Mm -hmm. um, just to conclude here, um, if you would have the chance to address a plenary session at the European Parliament on child poverty, for one minute, what would you say? I think one of the key issues about child poverty is the absolute waste of people's lives that by not investing in our children we actually destroy their life chances that we actually have an ongoing effect on society as a whole if we really want to correct that a lot of what we have to do is to really front load in the early years whether that's in questions of nutrition um, language development uh, education actually trying and and indeed the surroundings in which children live 
So it's also dealing with questions about housing as well as access to other services and I think just giving children a chance to to feel that they have aspirations, they have a stake in society, that they are heard, they have a future. I think those are some of the most important things we can be doing, but front-loading on the early years I think is something that more and more we are beginning to understand just how important that is to really invest from the very beginning in our children's lives. You said in the beginning that uh, some of the members of the parliament were probably not aware of the situation. Would you also address them like uh, waking them up trying to at least <laughs> well we can try and and what we also find in the parliament is that yes you can make people feel very sorry for poor children but the feeling sorry you, you know it can be a transient thing you also have to make sure that people are acting so it is a question about examining the systems that we have that actually keep people poor that keep people that keep children poor and that that i think is often a much more difficult thing for members of parliament to really come to terms with. Everybody, you know, everybody here in the parliament can put a few euros in a charity box. Changing the policy is something which is much more demanding. I said in the beginning that Caritas Europa has said that uh, child poverty is a badge of shame for Europe and cannot be tolerated any longer. Do you agree with that? I think it, child poverty is a badge of shame for Europe. It's something that I chair one of Parliament's delegations dealing with some of the poorest countries in the world. We're concerned about child poverty there. We want to eradicate it in those developing countries. We also have to be equally determined to eradicate it in our own countries, some of the richest countries in the world. We should not have children living in poverty. Jean Lambert, thank you for being with us.